Welcome students. Today we will solve first problem on trusses and in this lecture we will learn about method of joints. So we will solve this first problem with the help of method of joints. So let us start the lecture. So we are given one truss over here and we are asked to find forces in all the members of this truss by using method of joints. So in this truss there are three members given to us and we have to find forces in these three members. Means we have to find force in member AB and we have to find force in member AC and after that we have to find force in member CB. Now whenever we have to solve any problem on trusses through method of joints then the very first step is that we should identify the supports used in that particular truss and based on the supports used in the truss we should label the reactions provided by those supports. Now if you will see this problem carefully then you will find that at joint A we are given pin support and at joint C we are given roller support. And the next step is that we should label the reactions which these supports provides in this particular truss. Now we know that pin support provides two reactions one normal to its surface and second along its surface. Now this is the surface of pin support shown to us. It means we have to show one reaction normal to surface and one reaction along the surface. Now we know that uh, at the start of the problem we don't know the direction of these reactions. So we have to make assumptions. So right now we have assumed that this particular reaction is acting towards left and this reaction is acting in downward direction. So these are just assumptions. But we know pin support provides two reactions, one normal to its surface and second along its surface. Now let us see how uh, we should label these reactions. Now over here uh, this particular reaction is normal to the surface but actually it is acting in x direction and this reaction is acting at joint A so we have, we have labeled it as reaction at A in x direction. Similarly for this particular reaction we have labeled RAY. RAY means reaction at joint A and this is acting in y direction so we have labeled y reaction at joint A in y direction. Now let us label uh, the reaction provided by the next support in the truss and that support is a roller support and we know roller support provides only one constraint or one reaction that is normal to its surface. Now this is its surface so to this surface this is normal direction so let us label its reaction. Now we don't know the direction of this reaction so at the start we have just made the assumption that it is acting towards left side and it is acting at joint C and direction is X so we have labeled it as a reaction at C in X direction. So the first step under method of joints is we should see what type of supports we have in a truss given to us and we should label the reactions provided by those supports. So we have completed the first step. We have applied the reactions on this free body provided by these supports given to us. Now after this what we need to do we need to find these reactions. So these are unknown values for us. We don't know the values of these three reactions provided by these two supports. The next step is that we should find the values of these three unknowns. 
Now question arises how we can find these three unknowns. Now for that we have to understand one very important point that trusses are fully constrained structures means trusses are always in equilibrium. So if I have to say that this truss is in equilibrium then all the three conditions or equations of equilibrium are applicable to this truss. Means we can say if there are forces acting in this system then if I add all the forces acting in x direction then their sum has to be zero because this truss is in equilibrium. So first equation which will be applicable for this truss will be summation fx equal to zero. Then we can say that all the forces acting in this system in vertical direction or in y direction their sum has to be zero because this truss is in equilibrium. So from that point we will get second equation that is summation fy equal to zero. And we know that this truss is in equilibrium which means movement because of all the forces present in this system about any point of the truss must be equal to zero. So we will get third equation of equilibrium that will be called as summation m is equal to zero. So we have three unknowns in this truss and we have three equations for equilibrium of this truss. It means we can solve these three unknowns by using those three equations. Summation fx is equal to zero, summation fy equal to zero and summation m is equal to zero. Now in the next step we will use these three equations to find these three unknowns. So now we have to find reactions Rax, Ray and Rcx. So let us apply the first equation that is summation fx is equal to zero. That means whatever horizontal forces are acting in this system we should add those forces and their sum must be equal to zero because truss is in equilibrium. So let us see how many uh, forces are acting in horizontal direction in this system. If you will see carefully you will find that three unknowns are labeled by us and apart from that there is one external force of 84 kN acting at joint B in y direction. So it means in this system we have total four forces. One is external force acting at joint B, two are reactions provided by this pin support at joint A and one is a reaction provided by this roller support at joint C. Now out of these four forces there are only two forces acting in x direction. And these two forces are acting towards left. It means we will consider their sign negative. It means summation fx is equal to zero will be equal to minus Rax minus Rcx equal to zero. So from here we will get our first equation that is Rax plus Rcx is equal to zero. And we will call this equation number one because in this equation two unknowns are there and we cannot solve it. So let us label this equation as equation number one for time being. Now let us move on to the next equation of equilibrium that is summation fy equal to zero. Now let us see how many forces are there in this truss which are acting in vertical direction. You can see there are only two forces. One is external force 84 kN. Second is this reaction Ray. And both are acting in downward direction. So we have to consider these two forces negative. So our equation will be minus Ray minus 84 equal to zero. So from here we will get our first unknown Ray. So from here we got the value of Ray as minus 84 kN. Now over here we have to understand very important point. You can see we got negative value for Ray. So this negative value tells us that the direction which we 
assumed at the start is not correct actually it is acting in opposite direction so it means when we will do further calculations and if in those calculations we have to use ry then we will use this correct direction it means now we will consider that ry is actually acting in upward direction so for future calculations in this numerical we will use this direction not this one okay so from the second equation of equilibrium we got the first unknown that is ry now we will apply the third equation that says moment because of all the forces acting in the system about any point in the system must be equal to zero now let us consider moment about joint a so why we are considering moment about joint a because normally we consider that point as moment center at which maximum forces are acting so that our equation should become simple so that is why we are considering moment about joint a equal to zero because at joint a two forces are acting so moment because of these two forces will be directly zero because they are intersecting moment center their perpendicular distance will be zero so our equation will have only two moments and those moments will be because of rcx and 84 kN so our equation will be simple with less variables okay if we will consider moment because of these four forces about joint a then we will find that moment because of rax and moment because of ry will be zero because they are intersecting joint a it means in this equation we have to just calculate moment because of 84 kN force and rcx so let us first find moment because of this 84 kN force now this is the moment center and this is the direction of 84 kN this has a magnitude of 84 kN and the perpendicular distance between this force and moment center is 3 meters because this is the line of action of that force and between the line of action and the moment center this is the perpendicular distance and that is 3 meters it means the magnitude of the moment because of 84 kN will be 84 into 3 so that is the magnitude but now we have to see its direction also because moment is a vector quantity we have to see whether it is a clockwise moment or anti-clockwise moment now you can see this is a this is an anti-clockwise moment so moment because of 84 kN force will be positive so we will write positive 84 into 3 now let us observe the moment because of rcx now this is the line of action of this force and uh, this is the moment center so mo from moment center we will drop a perpendicular onto line of action of that force now this distance perpendicular distance is how much 4 plus 1.25 that means 5.25 is the moment arm and force is rcx so magnitude of the moment because of rcx will be rcx into 5.25 now let us see its direction let us see whether it is clockwise moment or anti-clockwise moment now this is the moment center and this is the direction of rcx so it will be a clockwise moment so it means we have to consider it negative so moment because of rcx will be minus rcx into 5.25 so our equation will be 84 into 3 minus rcx into 5.25 equal to 0 so in this equation we have only one unknown and we can find this unknown so we will get rcx as 48 kN. now over here you can see the magnitude of rcx is positive it means whatever direction we have considered at the start of the numerical that is towards left is correct so no need to reverse it it means in the next calculations if we have to use rcx we will consider this direction only now we have found rcx and ry now it's time to find rx 
So for that what we need to do, we have to put the value of our cx in equation 1. So we will say put value of our cx in equation 1 to get our ax. So from here we will get value of our ax as minus 48 kN. Now what is the meaning of negative sign? Negative sign means that the direction which we have assumed at the start of numerical is not correct. It is actually acting towards right. It means in the coming calculations of this numerical, if we have to use Rax, then we have to consider this direction of Rax. That means towards right. So this was the second step. First step was label the reactions provided by the support in the truss. Then second step was use three equations of equilibrium to find the unknowns means find those reactions. Now in the third step what we have to do we have to find the forces in the members of this truss. Now let us see how we can find those forces. So first of all we should change the directions which we have found for the reactions at joint A. The direction of reaction at joint C is the same. So we will not change this. So reactions at joint A, one will be acting towards right and other will act towards upward direction. Now let us label their values. So we have found this is 84, this is 48 and this is 48. Now you can see we have reversed their direction. So in front of their magnitude we are not using negative sign. This is a very important point to understand. For RAY we were getting value of minus 84. But now we have reversed its direction so no need to minus, put minus over here. Fine. Similarly for this particular force we have reversed its direction so we will use positive sign that is 48. Okay. Now in order to find the forces in the members of truss we have to consider equilibrium of a particular joint. Now in this truss there are three joints available joint A, joint B and joint C. Now rule says that we have to start with that joint first at which maximum number of unknowns are two only. Now if you will observe joint A, at joint A there are two forces acting 48 kilo Newton and 84 kilo Newton and these two values are known to us and to joint A there are two members connected member AB member AC. Now in these two members we don't know the force we have to find these forces. So it means at joint A there are two unknowns. So this force that is FAB the force in member AB is labeled as FAB is unknown to us. Similarly force in member AC that is FAC is unknown to us. So if we will observe this joint A at joint A maximum two unknowns are there. So that means we can start with joint A because rule says that you can start with that particular joint only at which maximum two unknowns are there. So at joint A only two unknowns are there so we can start with joint A. Okay, before starting with joint A let us observe other joints also. Let us observe joint B. At joint B there is one external force acting which is of 84 kN magnitude and we know its value. And on joint B two members are connected member BC and member AB. Now in these two members we don't know the forces. It means forces in these two members are unknown to us. So for joint B also maximum number of unknowns are two only. So according to rule we can start with the joint B as well. Now let us observe joint C. At joint C one reaction is acting and the value of that reaction we have already found. 
एंड टू ज्वाइंट सी टू मेंबर्स आर कनेक्टेड एफ ए सी एंड एफ बी सी नाइन दीज टू मेंबर्स फोर्सेज आर अनोन टू अस सो एट ज्वाइंट सी मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ अनोन आर ऑल्सो टू ओनली इट मीन्स वी कैन स्टार्ट विद ज्वाइंट सी एज वेल सो वी हैव कंक्लूडेड दैट फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर ट्रस देर आर थ्री ज्वाइंट्स एंड एट दीज थ्री ज्वाइंट्स देर आर मैक्सिमम टू अनोन so we can start the next part of this numerical with any of these three joints okay so let us start with the joint a so we will say equilibrium of joint a now in order to find the forces in these three members of this truss we have to consider equilibrium of every joint remember when we were calculating these reactions we considered equilibrium of the whole truss so we used three equations summation fx equal to 0 summation fy equal to 0 and summation m equal to 0 but now when we have to find the forces in these three members or in the members of the truss then we have to consider equilibrium of each joint means we will say each joint of the truss is also in equilibrium means joint is not moving in x direction joint is not moving in y direction and there is no movement also at joint but over here we have to understand one very important point what is that point that for the equilibrium of a particular joint we can use only two equations that is summation fx is equal to 0 and summation fy equal to 0 we cannot use summation m equal to 0 why because all the forces are concurrent so their perpendicular distance from that joint is zero so third equation will not be useful for us so this is the important point to remember that when we have to consider the equilibrium of a particular joint we have to apply only two equations of equilibrium that is summation fx is equal to 0 and summation fy equal to 0 so we have written equilibrium of joint a that means for this joint now i can use two equations to find the unknowns so what are those two equations summation fx is equal to 0 and summation fy is equal to 0 now before applying these two equations of equilibrium we need to draw the free body of this joint first so how to draw the free body of this joint it is very simple first of all label the joint so over here we have labeled the joint we have labeled the name also as joint a after that you should see how many members are connected to that joint how many members two members member ab and member ac then from that point draw those two members means from this point draw a vertical line and draw another line at some angle to the horizontal so you see we have drawn one vertical line here and another line which is at some angle to the horizontal means in this truss we are shown that member at some angle to the horizontal so over here also we are representing that member at some angle to the horizontal after this what we have to do we have to label the forces in these two members now over here one very important point we have to understand when we have to label the forces in these two members we have to always label tensile forces so what is the meaning of tensile forces let us understand that first suppose this member is connected at this joint and if i pull this member towards this side so that force will stretch this member so that force will be called as tensile force so remember whenever you have to draw the free body of any particular joint at the start we don't know the direction of forces in the members so we don't know the direction of forces in the members so we have to consider or we have to make an assumption that the forces in these members are tensile in nature so how to show tensile force 
वी हैव टू शो डायरेक्शन अवे फ्रॉम द जॉइंट मीन्स वी आर पुलिंग दिस मेंबर इन डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन सो वी आर स्ट्रेचिंग दिस मेंबर so this member is in tension because of that stretch so this is just an assumption so i am again repeating after labeling the members we don't know the direction of the force is acting in those members right now so we have to make assumption that in the members the forces are tensile in nature so how you will show tensile force means you have to show the direction away from the joint so we have shown the direction away from the joint and the name of this member is ac so let us label that force that tensile force as fac similarly for other member we will show the direction away from the joint so it is also a tensile force so let us label this force as fab because it is acting in member ab so first step was label the joint second step is mar uh, label the members acting at that joint or connected to that joint the next step is in those members show tensile forces label their direction away from the joint and label those forces now what is the next step next step is you should see is there any other external force or reactions acting at joint a? at joint a there is no other external force acting but reactions are acting at joint a so next step is show those reactions also at joint a so we have to show this horizontal reaction acting towards right and we have to show this vertical reaction of 84 kN after that what we have to do we have to see is there any inclined force acting in that free body yes there is one force inclined at some angle to the horizontal so now we have to resolve that force into its components one along x direction second along y direction you see this force is acting in this member so we have to resolve this into its components so this force is starting from this joint so this is the origin so from origin we will sketch two lines one along horizontal direction dash line one along vertical direction another dash line now these two are the components of this particular force now let us label the directions of these two components so how we will label see the direction of the force itself the direction of the force is away from the joint so in these two components also label direction away from the joint so in this also label direction away from the joint now after that we have to find the magnitude of these components for that we have to first find the angle of this force either with the horizontal component or with vertical component so let us find the angle of this force with this component that is horizontal component now how we can find this angle we have to focus on this part of the truss focus on this part a b let us say this point is d so in triangle a b d this angle is theta so apply tan formula we will say perpendicular upon base equal to tan theta so tan theta will be equal to perpendicular upon base and theta will be equal to tan inverse perpendicular upon base so how much is perpendicular 1.25 how much is base 3 so we have calculated theta equal to 22.61 so this is theta 22.61 theta 22.61 so we are considering angle of this force with this component so this will be cos component and this will be sin component so let us label this component as fab cos 22.61 and this will be fab sin 22.61 after labeling these components we are ready with the free body now we can apply those two equations that is summation fx is equal to 0 
and summation f y equal to 0. So let us first apply summation f x equal to 0. Now let us observe in this free body how many forces are there which are acting in x direction. There are only two forces 48 and f a b cos 22.61. It is a negative force because it is acting in left direction and this is a positive force it is acting in right direction. So equation will be minus FAB cos 22.61 plus 48 equal to 0. So in this equation there is only one unknown we can find that unknown and we will get the value as 52 kilo Newton. Now one very important point we have to understand. We got positive value for FAB. It means whatever direction we considered for FAB, that direction is correct, that assumption is correct. So we considered tensile force, we assumed tensile force at the start and we got positive answer. It means our assumption is correct. So that is why over here we have labeled tensile, T stands for tensile force. Now next equation is summation f y equal to 0. So now we will see how many forces are acting along y direction. There are three forces 84 positive acting in upward direction, FAC negative acting in downward direction, FAB sine 22.61 negative acting in downward direction. So equation will become 84 minus FAC minus FAB sine 22.61 equal to 0. Now in this equation we know the value of FAB. So how much is the value we concluded? 52 in the above equation. So put that value over here we will get value of FAC as 64 kN. And you can see from this equation we got the value of FAC as a positive value. So what does it mean? It means that whatever direction we considered for FAC or whatever direction we assumed for FAC at the start that direction is correct and we always assume tensile force it means that direction is correct so FAC is actually a tensile force so from these two equations we got two unknowns or we got forces in these two members FAB and FAC. So it means in both the members the forces are tensile in nature means acting away from the joint acting away from the joint and the magnitude of FAB is 52 and magnitude of FAC is 64. Now we need to find the force in this remaining member which is BC. Now listen to the next step very carefully. Now rule says that once you solve a particular joint then you have to pick next immediate joint. So two joint A we have two immediate joints this is joint B and this is joint C. So you can start with any of these two joints but you have to satisfy first rule. What was first rule that you can start with only with that joint at which maximum unknowns are 2 only and at the start of this numerical we concluded that at all the joints of this truss maximum unknowns are 2 only. So if I consider next immediate joint B then we can start with B because maximum unknowns are below 2 now because we have found this value. So if I consider next immediate joint as C then also we can solve it because we will satisfy rule number one quite easily. Okay, now let us pick the next immediate joint as C. So let us start with joint C. So in the next step we will say equilibrium of joint C. Now we will work for joint C and we will apply the equations of equilibrium for joint C. So what are those two equations? Summation fx equal to 0, summation fy equal to 0. Now before that what we need to do? We need to draw free body of this joint first. So let us draw its free body. So how we can draw its free body? First of all label the joint C. Then you should see how many members are connected to that joint. There are two members connected. One is in vertical direction 
second is at some angle so draw those two numbers at that joint so one is in vertical direction one is at some angle to the horizontal now in the next step we have to label the direction of forces acting in these two members okay so let us start with this member first because it is a known member to us because in this member we have found the magnitude of the force 64 kilo newton in the previous free body of joint a now over here we have to understand very important step what is that step we know the force in this member because we have calculated that force in the free body of A and we have calculated in the free body of A that the magnitude of force in member AC is of 64 kN and it is a tensile force for joint A means this force is acting away from the joint now for joint C we have to understand one very important point now this force is acting towards C and over here we have to apply Newton's third law if some force is acting towards any particular joint then that joint will offer equal and opposite reaction to that force so that reaction will become active force for joint C so it means if I have to draw the free body of joint C then in member AC I have to consider this direction for this member so over here C we have considered away from the joint but we will use the same magnitude we will not reverse its sign we will use the same magnitude only thing is we have to change the direction of that force for the next joint so this is a very important step in the calculations of truss so I am repeating this step again in the free body of A we found that in member AC 64 kN force is acting and that force is a tensile force for joint A and it is acting away from joint A now this force is acting towards joint C and Newton's third law will come into picture. Joint C will offer equal and opposite reaction to that action. So that reaction provided by joint C will act as active force in the free body of joint C. So in the free body of joint C we have to consider this direction for member AC not this one this is a very important step we should consider in our mind we should keep this in our mind now let us label the direction of next member now this is an unknown member and we know for an unknown member what we will do we will assume direction away from the joint because we have to consider tensile force we have to assume tensile force in unknown member so let us label it as FCB now after this what we do we see is there any external force acting at joint C no there is no external force acting at joint C now we have to see is there any reaction acting at joint C yes there is reaction acting at joint C and it is acting towards left and it is a horizontal reaction of 48 kilo newton so let us label that reaction here after that we have to see are there some inclined forces in the uh, free body yes there is one inclined force so we have to resolve that force into its components one along x direction one along y direction so this is the origin from origin we will draw one dash line in x direction and another dash line in y direction now after that what we will do we will consider the directions in those two components for that we have to see the direction of the force itself so direction in the of the force is away from the joint so in these two members also we have to consider direction away from the joint so over here also direction away from the joint now after that we have to find the magnitudes of these components so how we can find the magnitude first of all we have to locate its angle either with the vertical component or with the horizontal component so let us locate its angle with the vertical component let us say this is angle theta now let us find this angle now so where is this angle this angle is here this is theta 
So how we can find this theta? We can use uh, this triangle. We can say C B. Let us say this is E over here. There is a point E. Let us say so we can say B E C in triangle B E C. This is theta. Apply tan theta perpendicular upon base. So theta will be equal to tan inverse perpendicular upon base. So theta is tan inverse perpendicular is how much? It is three. And how much is this base? It is four. So from here we will get value of theta as thirty six point eight six. Now we are considering the angle of this force with this component. So this will be cos component. This will be sine component. So we will label this as F C B sine thirty six point eight six, and this will be F C B cos thirty six point eight six. Now let us apply equations of equilibrium for this joint C. We will say summation F X equal to zero. So let us see how many forces are acting in x direction. There are only two, 48 and F C B sine 36.86. Both are acting towards left direction, so we will consider these two negative. So we will write minus 48 minus F C B sine 36.86 equal to zero. So in this equation, there is only one unknown, and we can find that unknown. So we got our last answer also, that is force in member C B. And we got the value negative. So we considered tensile force, but now we got negative value. It means it is not a tensile force. Its direction is towards joint C. It means it is a compressive force. So we have written C in bracket. Now you can see we have found the forces in all the three members of this truss, and we have found the third force with the summation of x is equal to zero only. So there is no need to apply the next equation. So I hope uh, the steps of methods of joints are clear to you thank you very much